All right, so this is a continuation from a previous video. If you haven't seen that, go back to that one. At the end of the 20s, Brand had become disillusioned. Weimar democracy and even the liberties of Berlin had disappointed him. Several times he had advised the readers of Der Eigene to vote for the Social Democrats, but when they were in the government, they did not press on with the abolition of paragraph 175. In 1929, Brand announced in Der Eigene that legal reform had become a minor goal of his movement, since the eros that he believed in was above the core sens was above the core sensuality forbidden by paragraph 175. He also complained that most homosexuals were not interested in political struggles and preferred to amuse themselves in a thriving Berlin subculture. Because of his intellectual tone, Brand liked to present himself as the leading man of a homosexual elite. The number of readers of Der Eigene remained rather small in comparison to mass circulation uh, periodicals such as the Journal for Human Rights, Friendship Journal, and The Island, uh, published by Friedrich, uh, Friedrich uh, Radsuit, who headed a homosexual organization counting a membership of some thousands. Brand considered Radsuit a vulgar man whose writings were in bad taste. Uh, in fact, if you uh, go to chapter 12, uh, Adolf Brand's last letter uh, mentions this guy and says that he, he was a sleazy pub, uh, publisher and all this stuff. But anyways, I continue. The rise of National Socialism intensified Brand's pessimism. In the early 30s, he announced that he would write his memoirs, but Hitler's rise to power prevented their publication and put an end to his activities. Soon after Hitler's nomination as prime minister, the Geiman chef Der Eigenen and its writings were banned. Nazi stormtroopers raided Brand's house five times and seized his journals, books, and photos. And uh, again, chapter 12, uh, I, I translated his letter mostly thanks to Google Translate. Uh, but he talks about uh, his personal experience of being raided. So anyways, continuing on. A small part of his works uh, was saved by one of his assistants, Karl Meyer, who fled to Switzerland where he started Der Kreis which in the 40s and 50s was the most important European gay journal. Although he was well known as a gay activist, uh, Brand was not arrested by the Nazis. Apart from not being Jewish, as were Hirschfeld and Kurt Hiller, another important leader of the committee, Brand was probably not considered a leftist. I have found one indication that he was connected to a Nazi who might have protected him, but above all, his marriage appears to have been his safeguard. Uh, yeah, Adolf Brand was, uh, he fought in World War I. He was injured like Hitler. And, and uh, he met a nurse and married her. Uh, but he kept writing uh, these, uh, these writings on same-sex sexuality. I, I wonder what Mrs. Brand thought of it, but that, was, but that is lost to history. So, uh, last sentence here. His, his erotic attraction to young men had not prevented him from taking a nurse as his wife. Oh, here we go, yeah. Uh, their lives were never threatened by the Nazi regime, and it is likely that they would have survived the war were it not for the American bombardment which killed them at home in 1945. So yeah, in the, uh, in the waning days of World War II, the Americans started bombing the shit out of um, all, uh, all German cities, which was completely pointless. They were targeting civilians. They weren't even targeting factories. That was a major war crime, but because the Americans won, that was never prosecuted. Uh, but anyways, so, <clears throat> so, okay, so we begin with the, um, at the beginning of page, uh, well, it doesn't matter, but page, uh, two of homosexual, homosexuality and male bonding in pre-Nazi Germany by those guys. Uh, they mention that Adolf Brand's career as a gay activist, and they continue to use the word gay movement, um, well, that's very interesting because as I show in chapter 12, and as these guys show because I just quote them, uh, these guys quoted Adolf Brand as basically saying the same things that I've said in Guerrero, that you have this gay minority uh, who are effeminate. They're a small part of the population, but most men have a bisexual potential. So why is it that these guys would, would headline uh, a section as Adolf Brand, the gay activist, and I think the interesting thing is, uh, these guys were living in the 60s and 70s. Uh, I think Hubert Kennedy is still alive. I think he's in his 80s now, uh, if he's still alive. But the point is that they were in the 60s and 70s, and there were still, although I, I quote Harry Hay in Chapter 9, and Harry Hay makes the case that gay is this effeminate little minority. Um, there were other people, social constructivists, 
who made the case that they looked at Greece, they looked at Rome and said, wait, all these men were having sex with other men. So for a lot of men in the 60s and 70s, when they identified as gay, they did realize that gay was more than just a small minority. So I think that's why they called him a gay activist, because gay until, well, I don't know, maybe 80s, 90s, even in the, in the 60s and 70s, there were still plenty of people who looked back at Greece and Rome and said, well, wait a second, it's more than just a small minority. So that's why they called him gay. Oh boy, well, that's gone. Uh, so anyways, let's turn to the newspaper, and there's not much information here, but let's read it nonetheless. Okay, so here's the newspaper. Again, this is going to be available on the thread, so click through if you're looking on YouTube. But let me just read a very short article. So it says... This is a big newspaper. Uh, the accuser of Prince von Bula, Berlin, November 28th. Another trial will soon take place, similar to that of Maximilian Harden, the editor who, accu who was accused of having made false charges of gross immoralities against Co Count von Moltke. Adolf Brand, another Berlin journalist, is accused of having slandered Prince von Bula, Chancellor of the German Empire, by publishing by publishing concerning him practically the same charges that Harden made against von Moltke. Brand confidently ex expects to be acquitted, as was Harden, by proving that his charges are true. Uh, well, as we know, uh, <laughs> he wasn't uh, successful in his defense. But basically what happened was, I mean, just to recap, what happened was there was one trial in which uh, prominent members of the German government were accused of engaging in same-sex activities, and they were proven to be true, so you can't sue for libel and slander. You know, you can say it if it's true, right? Uh, Adolf Brandt had the same strategy, but it backfired on him because he couldn't prove that, um, that they were indeed uh, same-sex oriented or homosexual, whatever word you want to use. And as we learned from the book that is now on the ground, uh, he was sentenced to prison for a long time. Now, it's very interesting because, you know, this is a newspaper from 1907. Okay, so I printed it out and I taped it together. But this is a paper, but this is a, a page from a newspaper in 1907. And I looked at all the other articles just for fun. And uh, you see right below here, you see this woman. Uh, and some of you, if you were paying attention in history class, which you should because it's mostly propaganda. But if you remember this face, it's Carry A Nation. Uh, and this was a very ugly, very mean-spirited woman who lived about a hundred years ago. And her moral crusade was to ban alcohol. So it's, it's quite appropriate that, uh, you know, you have Adolf Brand here who's fighting against Christian moralizers. And you have a apish looking woman who's trying to ban uh, alcohol from everywhere. You know, her complaint, uh, Carrie Nation's complaint, was that uh, her husband was always getting drunk. Well, you know, I wonder what the problem was in that marriage. I mean, she was not exactly the prettiest, but especially she was a very uh, mean-spirited bitch. Um, over here, we have, we have an advertisement from Standard Oil. Uh, there we go. They're advertising uh, oil heaters. Uh, you have an advertisement here for a railroad. Uh, you have an advertisement for a shoe store. Uh, you have somebody here, this woman over here, uh, that is the mayor's wife. It looks like a man in drag, but a very unconvincing transvestite, as one could say. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we have uh, up here, we have un uh, Here's Uncle Sam's New Money. And here's a pile of money over here. And greenbacks that drop 3%. And the short story behind this is in 1907, there was a panic. So there was a kind of financial collapse. And the government, in its wisdom, decided to uh, do a little bit of um, stimulus by printing more money. And interesting how times don't really change. Uh, on the other side, we have an advertisement here for You Need a Biscuit. Now, this is by Nabisco, National Biscuit Company, for um, uh, just for biscuits, five cents. Uh, and, and the interesting thing about the National Biscuit Company is, is that uh, Nabisco, that's still around. They actually made Unita Biscuits until, I think, 2007. 
So this is relatively recently gone, and this has recently come back, you see. But anyway, so you have uh, Nabisco here. And Nabisco in the late 90s, early, whatever the decade after that is called. I don't think we've ever figured out what that's called. But when I was in middle school, there was a site, uh, a gaming site uh, for kids called CandyStand.com. It's still available. And I remember it was on the back of a gum. And I told everybody about it. And by the end of class, everybody was on that site. And I said, oh, I want to make a gaming site. And I did, which is... If you go to antcon.com, you'll see that, uh, you know, we've had over four and a half billion page views over the last 10 years. But anyway, so it's, it's interesting how I got the inspiration to start my business from the National Biscuit Company over here and this guy over here as well. So it's interesting how they're right next to each other. Anyways, um, is there anything else interesting on here? Anything else I wanted to say here? No, that's pretty much it. So again, um, the book that is on the floor that I read from, that's I'm going to copy that as a PDF into, if you want to take a look at that, I'll link to this and I'll provide some other interesting things in the thread. Goodbye.